I'm going to show you how to make a very simple, very inexpensive, self-resonating, high-frequency, high-voltage power source. We start with, uh, I can start, I start actually with a 12-volt battery, but with this one here, this demonstration, I'm going to use the input power from the household current. It's going to go through this kilowatt, it's going to go through this variac, and it's going to wind around here. It's going to go to, through this 10 volt transformer. Then the 10 volt transformer is going to come into this little uh, array. And it's going to go into a switch. Let me get my pointer. Okay. Uh, it's going to go in, in here, comes over through the switch, comes back into this side here. And the switch will supply power to directly to the coil, where there's five windings here on this part here. I'll show you that in a minute. And then the other part of the power goes through this variable resistor. You can also use a non-variable, but I find that, especially with what I'm doing here, this variable one's nice. And then there goes this, the second set of resistors is uh, total of 30 ohm at two and a half watts. Uh, I used five 150 ohm uh, resistors in parallel. And then of course when the power is turned on, the little LED lights up. It's on this side, it's on the power on side. There's a the ground. And uh, it's very simple because all you need is one, let's see, that trans Transistor is a 2N3055. It's a common Radio Shack item. They're only three, about three bucks. And I'll see if I can get you a little better picture of that. There's the resistor. And I'll show you the diagram how to wire that up. And, um, I mean, sorry, transistor. Very simple. The coil itself is just a regular television flyback transformer. And all you do is you just wind uh, wires on the outside. This will be like the feedback loop. This sends feedback to your transistor switch so that it sets your timing for your frequency. And then this is the actual power. Um, this one, you're supposed to use five. This I, I made two of these. I made one with five and one with seven. So it's two, four. Yeah, this one's got close to eight windings on it, but it works terrific. The uh, one thing you want to do is your ground hooks up to the back of this, and so what I did was I numbered them all, and um, and then when you're searching for the the correct wire to use coming off of your hot lead, you just hold it close to these little terminals until you find one that uh, shoots a spark straight to it, and then mark that one. And what I did was I covered all the other ones up with a little bit of goop just so I didn't have any uh, unexposed connections. In this case, I've been running this through this uh, Tesla coil here, but it's not really working yet. I don't have the, either the right frequency or the right amperage. And then this is my spark gap, and this is really nice. This system would probably be really nice for a car that has a distributor, and you want to replace the coil with this setup, and I'll show you why in a second. As you can see, the spark plug has the terminal actually removed. Okay, Let's see if I'm forgetting anything. I also added a little fan here, which consumes about seven watts to keep the uh, transistor cooler because it gets pretty hot when I'm running at 12 volts. But now at, tw at 10 volts, it's staying cooler. And as you can see, I can even turn it down lower with some interesting effects. So, I'm going to turn it on. This lights up. Of course, the fan is going up, so I make a little bit of noise, but this thing's kind of noisy. This is a spark. And as you can see, it's a. I don't know how to focus this thing to be. It makes a really nice spark. And it's over. A hundred thousandths of an inch, so it'd be more than double what you'd have in a car. If you want to convert your car to run a, some really good, get some really good performance. 
Now what I can do is uh, we're currently running at about 10 volts. So I can turn this voltage down here with this Variac. And you'll see, of course the fan is going to slow down. But you'll see this spark. Uh, I don't know how the focus is on this, I can't tell. I think a pretty decent spark at a pretty high frequency. And I'm going to guess that it's probably running down closer to uh, 5 volts because look at the watts. It's only running 11 watts. And that's with the fan running. So probably a third of those watts is coming off of that fan. And with this video, at the end of the video, I'll add a bunch of still photographs. But this is pretty easy to make. And uh, as you can see, I just used a lot of scrap and salvage stuff. It cost me, it cost me, you know, $3 for the transistor. But I salvaged the fan from an old power supply for a computer. Of course, the, the flyback transformer you get without a television, old television set. Um, a lot of the resistors and stuff I had laying around. So this is something that, you know, here you go, it's a real nice, High voltage, high frequency power supply without any uh, complicated circuitry for timing and timers. And, and it's self resonating. So, the way these coils work on the flyback is that they uh, cooperate with each other. Here's a little diagram. You can pause it on this diagram. Something's real important, and uh, I, there's other sites that have this. Wiring, di wiring diagram, but because I wired the windings in the same direction, see how they're both starting at the top and going kind of clockwise? Well, um, you have to be sure if you wire it that way to uh, have your, this is your feedback loop up here. Be sure that you, your power comes in at the bottom and goes out at the top. And with your actual power supply coming in, I want it to come in at the top and go out at the bottom. That way it gives it an opportunity for the opposing uh, fields to, to act in resonance or to at least cooperate because if, you, if they're both running the same way, you put your positive up here and run it down this way, it won't work. And that's something I had to discover and not all the drawings on this are correct. The transistor again is the 2M3055. You should use that one. It's the most durable for this application. And these can run at 5 to 12 volts. And some of them are, some people run these up to the 24 volts, which I don't recommend running over 12 volts because that transistor gets pretty hot. Um, and the spark stays real cool. So I'm surprised maybe the spark plug might pick up, you know, maybe 2 degrees in temperature at the most from what I could. Um, I have one of those infrared temperature readers, and uh, of course I wouldn't want to touch it right now. <laughs> but it it doesn't get hot. It's a cool spark, probably because of the high frequency. And you can see, obviously, it's a very high voltage because it's much higher voltage than the stock automotive uh, type distributor would give you because. You know, those will be lucky to jump 50 or 60,000. And this does a over 100 very easily. Now I'll bring up the... This is around 10 volts. And at 12 volts, the sound changes. Which I suppose means the frequency is also changing. Now this is probably down, getting down close to 5 volts here. But still, that's a, that's a mighty piece of spark, 5 volts, for the automotive application. And of course, what we're doing here is um, we're using this as a primary power source for other things like Tesla coils or Donald Lee Smith replications. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll add some photos. 
I'm going to add this to the video. There's just a quick note here about this, the Spark application for, say, a vehicle. You can imagine a, a typical automotive coil would sparks one time on each uh, power stroke. Well, with this type of a ignition system, you would have a, more than double the spark gap, and save uh, on a six-cylinder motor at um, 2,000 RPM, that spark has the potential to flash up to 200 times, which would mean, of course, uh, some amazing you know, drop in emissions and probably would greatly improve power and fuel mileage. And here, uh, at 1,000 RPM, 400 you know, flashes or sparks up to that, that number. I don't know how many you'd actually get, but that would be pretty amazing. That would actually, you know, with those low RPMs, when you need power, that would seem to have a great effect on the power. And as you can see, you can vary the voltage. You can go all the way down to 5 volts and still get a substantial spark.